Good morning, everyone. I'm Mark Roth. I'm the Director of Sales with Goodway Technologies. And um, today I'm going to talk to you about our line of uh, maintenance equipment that's geared towards doing PM maintenance and cooling towers. Um, I'll go over uh, stuff that we have that's used for cleaning the fill as well as the basin, the different areas that you want to clean, why you want to clean. Um, and at the end, if you have some questions, you can type them in and we'll get to any questions um, at the end of the, the presentation. But uh, I'll get started now. Um, we've been making equipment for cleaning um, chillers for a long time. That's kind of what we're known for, tube cleaning equipment. And um, we frequently get asked over the years, um, what do you have for cleaning out the, the cooling towers? And um, uh, in the past, uh, people just had get a pressure washer and kind of blast it down and maybe spend a weekend out of it, drain the whole tower down, go in with shovels and vacuums and drums and try and get all the mud and the sediment out of the basin while that other person is using a, a pressure washer to try and clean the fill. And what we found is it's not really an efficient way to clean it and it's not doing, it's not getting the, the end result that they want either. Um, so uh, the two areas that we focus on are the fills, that's this plastic outside coating and a cooling tower like this on a cross flow where you're gonna have water trickling down the fill. This is where the cooling's taking place. And a fan inside that's sucking air through this thin coat of water that's trickling down this fill. Um, that's where it's cooling. So the water is coming from your condenser, the heat is getting expelled, and as the water comes back down, it's getting cooled, going into the basin, and then going back to your chiller skin. So the fill is the, the first part that we'd uh, focus on cleaning and also the basin. So what you have in the basin is um, all that sediment and mud that kind of collects in there over time, um, depending on where you are or how high or how low your cooling towers are. Um, you might get all different types of uh, deposits that end up in the basin of the fill, uh, the basin of the tower. Um, that might be anything from leaves, and cottonwood, uh, sometimes cicadas. Um, to, uh, to just like a heavy um, sludge that you might get if you're in a city environment where the cooling tower is kind of acting like a filter for the whole city. So all that smog and air and stuff that's, that's being sucked into the fill and through the water, um, the deposits from it are getting collected down here. And what's happening to the fill, as you can see with this little big tip, depiction, is uh, you have a scale that can often collect on the fill. And scale is just the mineral deposits that are left behind from the water. So um, a lot of times it's pretty difficult to clean scale, uh, scale off a of fill uh, just because it adheres to it very well and that fill is also pretty um, delicate. So if you take a pressure washer and you get too close, it's gonna cut a big swath in the, in the fill and we don't wanna do that. So we want it something that's gonna allow you to be able to clean the fill without damaging it and also get that scale off. So we have a few different machines and a few different chemicals. I'm going to start over here with our cooling tower vacuum. So this was the first machine that we introduced for cleaning cooling towers. And this one's used for cleaning the basin. And what's nice about it, um, besides the fact that it gets all the sediment out of your tower, is that you can use it online. So you don't have to actually shut down your towers for a whole weekend and drain everything out of it. You can turn the fan off for about an hour. You go in with with a wand and different tools, and you're able to vacuum out all the sediment that's in the tower, um, almost the way that you vacuum like a pool, where you want to go slowly so you're not picking up the water and making it cloudy, um, but you can go quick enough so that you could probably get through a good size 750 ton tower in less than an hour's time. And the way that the machine works is it's just kind of like a really industrial pump and allows you to vacuum under water. So you have your intake hose that goes here and your tools for vacuuming. Here's one of them that comes with the kit. And it's, we call it the beaver tail. You know, the idea is it's a flat angled paddle that can reach under the fill and allow you to vacuum in all those spots that it's really hard to get to. And um, usually we turn the flow up a little bit, the suction up a little bit when you go into the fill so you can pull from further away. Now, it's bringing your water in here and the sludge in here. And before it, it discharges it, it comes in and it goes through the trap. So this basket's going to catch any large debris. And um, nuts and bolts, pieces of the fill that come off, um, whatever large debris might clog your drain or hurt the pump will be caught in this basket. 
and the rest of the sludge just passes through and discharges. So you'll have a, a hose coming off the back end of it here. Well, uh, you can hook that to your roof drain, and it'll just pass through like, like muddy water. And on top here, we have a flow control. So this is a really powerful pump. So if I turned it all the way up, it's at 60 GPM. Very rare that you'd ever need to use that. You're not trying to drain your tower. You're just trying to vacuum it. If I turned it all the way up, most tools that I would use when vacuuming would be sucked right to the floor of the tower. You wouldn't even be able to use it comfortably. So what we'll do is we'll open it usually somewhere around a third of the way. So it's around 20 GPM. It's just pulling enough water out of the tower to uh, kind of dilute that sludge that's in there and allow it to pass through um, without draining down your tower. Like your makeup will, catch, will keep up with the amount of water that you're vacuuming. So you've got your discharge going to your roof drain and um, it's a pretty simple process. But what we see is uh, there are some places where even losing 5 or 10 percent of your water um, is, is too much. It's more than what they want to uh, go through. And they'll use it for backing out the tower, and in a couple hours' time, you've got all that mud and that sediment out of your tower. And what's nice is that you also see a pretty immediate difference um, in your temperature and your pressure um, when you're monitoring your system because you've just taken out maybe 100 gallons worth of mud out of your system. That would be hurting the heat transfer in your chillers. So sometimes the 5 or 10 percent of water that you might go through when you're vacuuming is too much for some places. Um, uh, in Las Vegas, the water is very valuable, maybe even more so than, than the chemical that's used to treat it. Um, California's got some pretty um, strict restrictions on how much water that you can, you can use or how much water they're actually trying to save now in the, the heating and cooling process. So they don't want to lose that five or ten percent of the water while they're while they're uh, vacuuming. So what we came up with was a, a filter system that allows you to take the discharge water and put it into a, two cartridge filters and put it back in the tower. So the two filters, I'm sorry I don't have one here to show you, um, will uh, collect and go down to five microns and pull uh, um, all that sediment out and just put clean water back into the tower. And um, that's just a, another add-on that you can get as far as um, vacuuming without having to waste any water when you're doing the vacuuming. Um, doesn't add any time to it, but again, in areas where you really don't want to lose any of your water, um, you, you have that uh, ability to use it. It's called a CTBF2. So I'll move on from there and just say uh, the second line that we started making for cleaning um, was uh, for cleaning products for the fill. So again, in the past, what people would use are pressure washers, um, sometimes just a hose, sometimes when you just wet, scaled up fill, it looks like it's clean, but once it dries, it's, it, you see the scale again. And sometimes it's just a cosmetic thing, um, but sometimes there's enough scale or enough deposits, sometimes you even see plants and things growing out of the out of cooling towers, um, where it's, in, it's uh, affecting the water that's supposed to be flowing down in just a nice, thin, clear sheet. So you really want to have that, that uniform pattern of a thin sheet of water coming down the entire surface of your fill to get the proper cooling. And when you have big patches of scale, the water tends to channel and not cool nearly as efficiently. And your system is working harder to try and get the same kind of cooling done. So we wanted to have something that allowed you to clean scale as well as biological growth um, without damaging the fill. And that also, again, would allow you to, to do it in kind of a quick fashion without having to take the, the entire tower down for um, a weekend or something like that. So what we came up with first was our TFC 200. So this machine is kind of unique. Um, and it's a delivery device and rinser that was made specifically for this chemical product originally, which is scale break gel. So this is a five gallon pail of a descaling chemical that we make that's used for, for attacking calcium that's on your cooling tower. And what's really unique about it, besides the fact that it's uh, a descaler that's user friendly, and when I say user friendly, I mean if you get it on your hands, it's not gonna burn you, you wash your hands. Um, 
It's not going to attack the metals or hurt anything in there. Um, it also comes in the form of a gel. So when you spray it on, it will stick and cling to the fill like syrup. And it'll stay there. And it'll have time to react with the calcium that's on the fill and start to dissolve it. You can take the harshest chemical or acid that you can find, muriatic acid, and pour it into your cooling tower or pour it onto the fill. But it doesn't have that, that time to react and to do its job. It either runs right off or it doesn't even get into the parts of the, the uh, um, scaling that it needs to if you're just trying to circulate it through. See, a lot of the scaling on fill happens where the evaporation is taking place and it doesn't have water running over it. So we wanted something that would have that hang time so that you're able to, to really attack the fill aggressively um, and not have to worry that it's going to run off. So the process would be taking the machine, you would take this five gallon pail, and it fits right in the back of the machine. So it looks like a big machine, but it's a big hollow cavity in the back that's set up for, you see there, yeah. For putting your chemical in. So inside here is where you put the chemical. You have this plunger that would go directly into the chemical jug and allow you to siphon. And the machine has two pumps on board. Let me turn it back around so you can see the face of it. So your first pump is your chemical pump. That's the one for applying the gel. So I put my switch up to the chemical position. For gel, I keep it this valve here all the way on chemical, meaning it's putting it on at 100%. You don't want to dilute the gel. You need it to have that same consistency to, to stick. And you would apply the gel using one of the provided nozzles that gives you good coverage and gets into the honeycombs of the fill. This is what a lot of people call the honeycombs. It comes with uh, 45 degree angle detachments at the end so you can kind of spray down and get deep penetration into the honeycombs. And after that time, you want to let it sit for an hour, at least an hour, so that it has a chance to, to do what we were saying, to attack the calcium that's in there and start to dissolve it and loosen it up. And once that hour is passed, you can go for rinsing. Now, we typically, we wouldn't recommend a hose for rinsing because sometimes the scale is still clinging to the fill and you need to rinse it aggressively. But we wouldn't recommend the pressure washer either because that can be too aggressive. Especially since the fill is made out of plastic and it's often very brittle as well. So what we came up with was a secondary rinsing pump inside this machine that allows you to rinse it aggressively without damaging the fill. And we accomplished that by using a very high flow pump that's putting out 3 GPM. Um, but the pressure on it is scaled down to only 300 PSI. And that 300 PSI is enough to help break the bond of the scale to the fill. And that GPM helps flush it out really thoroughly and get deep penetration into the fill and do your rinse down. Now, that's the process for doing any kind of a fill cleaning, and that's one machine that can do that. And we did well with this machine for a number of years, selling it mostly to end users where we sell it to hospitals and office buildings universities that did a lot of their own maintenance in-house and wanted something that they could use to, to clean the fill off. Now we sold some to contractors and they liked the idea and the concept of having one tool that could do everything to make the fill look clean, especially when um, a lot of times that's how a, a contractor might be judged is the building manager will come up after they've done their, their cleaning and, and take a look at the fill and judge if the fill looks clean then he thinks they did their job. So it was, it was nice that they had something that would be able to clean, pull that scale off the fill and make it shiny and new again. The problem was, um, it's kind of big for a contractor. So the machine itself weighs about 120 pounds. And um, it's a little bit larger. So yes, you can get it up to a roof. Um, usually it takes two guys. Uh, it could be a little bit awkward getting it in and out of a van. So it's great for an end user, but it wasn't as user friendly for a guy that's got a van and it has to go job to job to job. Uh, 
uh, over the course of a week, cleaning, cooling tower fill in the summer. So the next generation of it, what we wanted to do is come up with something that allows you to clean it and have more portability. So to use the same chemical and to be able to have it a little bit more portable. And what we came up with was this TFC Junior. This is one of our newer products. And this is the same pump that we use for the chemical applicator here. And the idea is you'll have a dipstick here that's going to go into your five gallon jug. You have all the tools mounted on board so that you can get in and, and apply the chemical to the fill. And it's a, what I call an acid friendly pump. So it's, um, it's not going to, the, the, the gel that, that has an acidic content to it is not going to damage any of the seals or anything inside the pump. Um, and it allows you to, to apply that um, at the proper ratio so that you can get into the, the honeycombs and not use too much of the chemical up. And um, it's a lot more portable than, than wheeling around that 120 pound machine. You can just carry it up, it's about the size of a toolbox. And it would be used in conjunction with the rinsing pump. Now here's the rinsing pump here on the floor. Let's see if we can see that. There we go. So this is uh, the rinsing pump that was scaled down to 300 PSI at 3 GPM. And that's what you're going to use after you apply the gel for an hour and you won't be ready to rinse. And it'll also come with a turbo nozzle on it. So a turbo nozzle is a, a nozzle that allows you to have the power of a pinpoint, like a pinpoint pressure washer nozzle, but it spins at 3,000 RPM on a ceramic head inside this and gives you a much wider breadth of cleaning with that same power. And I'm going to just fire it up so you can get an idea of what it looks like when you're cleaning on fill and see that it's safe for the fill. So it works like a pressure washer, but again, much lower pressure. So you can see how you have that circular large pattern. You can reach that large area at a time. This is actual cooling tower fill. You can get right up on it without damaging it. And again, you have all the extensions that you need. So you can reach up high with the, with the wand if you needed to, and to reach in at an angle if you needed to. Your, your rinsing head, and um, it's, it, again, you, you don't want to buy just the gel because it's not really going to do the job for you. If you're just buying just gel, you need a way of being able to apply it safely and evenly um, over the, 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 the uh, honeycombs, and you also need the appropriate tool to, to rinse it off. Um, besides the gel, we have other products, and so not everybody is dealing with scale. When they're uh, cleaning the fill, sometimes it's just biological growth. Mud, slime, there's algae, plants. And what we make for that is a product called Tower Shine. So this would be more of your general cleaner, and it does not need to be applied um, uh, at 100%. So that's why on the TFC 200, you have that valve on it so that you're able to dilute the chemical if you want to with water. And it's such a concentrate that TF, that uh, tower shine that you can usually do it at, at 10 to 1 or even 20 to 1. And it'll still have good penetrating um, uh, chemical getting into your, your fill. And that's the tower shine. And you don't need to leave this on for an hour. Once you spray it on, leave it for a couple of minutes, and then again you would do that aggressive rinse off. And another chemical that we make is, is considered kind of a treatment afterwards. Now, this one does need to be applied at 100%. This is called Biospray Tower, and it's a, a biocide 
for killing um, bacteria and um, will kill Legionella and all that good stuff. Um, and this one is kind of a treatment that you would just spray on it 100% and leave it when you're done. So you're not rinsing it off. So this would be after you've completely done everything, you could put this into your, hook your TFC Junior up to it or put it inside your TFC 200 and just spray a coating all over the tower. And what's um, nice besides that it really works well is that it has an EPA registration for actually uh, being used in HVAC um, uh, areas. So that's kind of our lineup for, for cleaning coolant towers and do coolant tower maintenance. It's PM work for doing maintenance. I'm just take a quick peek and see if there's some questions there. Let me get close and use my glasses here. Easier to clean hanging fill sheets than stacked block fill sheets like you would see in a counterflow tower. How would you clean block fill with your machine in a counterflow style tower? Well, I think that what you're talking about is that uh, oftentimes you'd have um, sheets of the fill kind of pancaked together inside. And often what you would do is um, clean the inside surface, and if it's really thick and they have scale issues or biological buildup on the inside too, you would use the same machine and clean that on the inside as well. So you can just take the gun inside with you and, and spray it down. Now if you're talking about a, a tower where the fill is kind of on top and it's sort of raining down, um, that's something where you probably wouldn't use a uh, one of the uh, um, machines for cleaning the fill. You would probably use a chemical, like one of our steel break products. Um, and circulate it through the tower. So again, it's a user-friendly acid where it's very low concentration of acid. It doesn't attack the metals that are in the tower. It won't hurt the plastic of the fill. Um, but as you circulate it over time, it's going to start to dissolve the calcium that's in the tower. And it's a great product for it. We have three different blends, Skill Break MP, which is kind of a multi-purpose one, our general Skill Break blend, and we also have um, our scale break SS, which is designed specifically for working around anything stainless steel. Hope that answered the question. Explain what the scale real neutralizer is for. And um, we do have a, a neutralizer too. So as you're using gel, and you're cleaning the, the fill, um, it'll have a, a, an acidic content to it, and the scale, as it's coming into contact with the scale, it's, it's starting to neutralize itself. But sometimes you don't have enough scale in your system to neutralize all the chemical. So what we, we sell is, a, um, it's called Scale Break Newt, and it's a 25-gallon pail um, of just a powdered neutralizer that you could use afterwards. You would just add it to the basin, um, and let it circulate through for a little bit, and it will neutralize any any of the acidic content that's still left in your in your tower. It'll uh, lower your pH. Here's one about the filter. Can the filter be used standalone? Um, nope. The CTV F2 um, is not a standalone machine. It's something that you would need to. Um, attached to the cooling tower filter so that the, you, you have your suction and you're doing your vacuuming with the, the vacuum and that's feeding into the filter and that filter would take it down to five microns like I mentioned and then put the water back in the tower um, so that you're saving the water and the chemical. Okay. I think that was all the questions that we had. Um, I appreciate it everybody for tuning in with us today. Um, if you have any questions on it, we have a, a staff of um, sales engineers in the office that can answer any questions that you might have. What I'd say is a lot of times everybody's tower um, is in a different condition and sometimes you're not sure how much gel or how much chemical it is that you might need in order to do a cleaning. Um, call in, ask the questions and what's really helpful a lot of times is to take some good pictures too of what you're dealing with and you can send it in to us and we can give you our recommendations. Okay, if you're doing that, you're probably going to need this much gel, and you're going to need to let it sit for this long, or it might need two coats, or what have you. So um, please get in touch if there's any questions that we can answer for you. Thanks very much.